Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique piece of power armor known as Tessa's Fist. And for technical sakes I'm also going to be considering it as a unique weapon because it is specifically designed to be used with an unarmed build. So it's actually much more of a weapon than it is a piece of armor. And after thorough research and lots and lots of messing around, hopefully I can dispel myths that aren't unarmed builds are bad, because to be honest, using Tess's fist actually got pretty mental. So to acquire this piece, we need to come to the Quincy Police Station, which on the Pip-Boy map can be found to the southeast of Diamond City. Standing right inside the station will be the gunner named Tessa, standing here in her power armor. And darling, we're not here for you, we're here for your arm. So after giving her a bouquet of bullets, as we can see in her inventory, we will find Tessa's fist, the unique piece of power armor. And of course, be sure to grab it with your own fist. Now, unlike always, we're not actually going to be reducing our character's special attribute stats to one. However, I do have no bubblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character. Now, the reason we're not doing this stat is because as soon as you hop into a set of power armor, which is the only place that Tessa's fist can be used, your strength automatically defaults default to 10. So regardless of what my strength is outside the power armor, it's going to go up to 10 as soon as I hop into the power armor to use Tessa's fist. Now it took me about three hours to figure out how the hell to actually measure how much damage this is doing, but with the help of several Twitter followers and my good friend Kato Genesis, an absolute master of Fallout, and I'll leave a link to his channel in the description, but with his help. He informed me that under the stats tab in the Pip-Boy, there is a sub tab status, which I'm sure we all knew. What I didn't know was that little gun there next to the helmet represents the damage output of whatever weapon you are equipped with. So if you have no weapon equipped, it shows the damage output of your unarmed attacks, which as we can see there, the absolute base damage we'll ever be able to get out of Tessa's fist is 20 ballistic damage. Now the default minimum base damage of an unarmed attack is 10. And then for every point point of strength you have, it increases by one. Don't forget, we're now in the power armor, so our strength value is automatically set to 10. So we have the unarmed base damage of 10 plus the 10 points of strength, leaving us with, of course, the minimum base damage of Tessa's fist, which is 20. Now we can increase this quite a bit. If we go to a power armor station, when we select Tessa's fist and go to modify it, we want to add the hydraulic braces. Trust me, the other options might look tempting, but the hydraulic braces are far superior for an unarmed build anyway. But as we can see there, the hydraulic braces add plus 15 unarmed damage. I'll touch on why this extra 15 unarmed damage makes such a difference in a couple of minutes. But for now, after adding that mod, we'll have a look at Tessa's Fist as an item. As you can see, it adds 70 damage resistance, 25 energy resistance, 150 radiation resistance, its health is 250, which we'll come back to in a second. It now brings that extra 15 unarmed damage. It has a weight of 19 Point two, and its value is 100 caps. And as we can see up the top in the middle, Tessa's Fist plus 300% base durability. Now this is a unique legendary effect and this is the reason why Tessa's Fist is specifically built to be used with an unarmed build. One of the biggest problems with power armor is that it's constantly breaking. And how do you make power armor break faster? By smashing people in the head with it. So by increasing the durability by quite a substantial amount, it is of course now highlighted that Tessa's Fist is specifically built for punching people in the face. And given that it's a unique item and the best one of its kind, that's why we have this video. Now that unique legendary effect of plus 300% base durability is actually a little bit of a trick. Tessa's Fist is a unique piece of Raider 1 power armor, which means its normal durability is 50, but you can upgrade it to give it a base durability of 100, but then the legendary effect is only adding 300% of the original 50 durability. So we've got the 100 durability plus the 3 times 50 durability winding up with, as we can see there, the health or durability of the item is 250. A little bit of a weird one, but I thought it needed explaining. So how do we make this unarmed power armor build even better? Well, on the other arm, we also want to add the hydraulic braces. This will, of course, add another 15 unarmed damage to our pool of output unarmed damage. And although this won't affect the unarmed damage at all, on the torso, you might want to consider adding the Tesla coils, which, as we can 
frequency does 4 energy damage to nearby enemies, and because we have to get quite close to the enemies to punch them, these Tesla coils will come into effect during all of our combat experiences while using Tessa's fist in unarmed combat. Okay, so this is where I'm going to explain the absolute importance of adding the hydraulic braces modifications to both arms, Tessa's fist included. So as we saw before, Tessa's fist had a base unarmed damage output of 20, but now adding the hydraulic braces to both arm pieces increased the overall unarmed base damage output by 30. So the hydraulic braces modification don't just add damage to that single fist, but that damage is added to the overall unarmed damage output. And as I'm sure you have observed by now, with the hydraulic braces added to both arms, we now have a base unarmed damage output of 50 ballistic damage. And this core 50 damage is what the perks are going to affect. Now I don't normally run through perks in terms of increasing damage, but because this video is very one-off and for me personally trying to figure out how this works was quite difficult, I thought I would run us all through how to get the best results with Tessa's Fist. So as we talked about earlier, for each point of strength, it will increase the base unarmed damage output by one. And inside the power armor, you can increase your strength with food, meds, chems, and some perks such as solar powered. So if you wish to take your strength higher inside the power armor, you can do so using those methods. And I'm sure there's some others. Okay, so now we want to get all five Iron Fist perks. Punching attacks now do double damage. If you so wish, and I have chosen to do this, I'm going with the Lone Wanderer perk. When adventuring without a companion, you do 25% more damage. Now we want to go with the bloody mess perk we only need three which as we can see you now inflict plus 15 percent damage in combat this is where things start getting a little bit more complex you want to go two out of three with the rooted perk while standing still you now gain plus 50 damage resistance but your melee and unarmed attacks do 50 percent more damage and speaking of mathematical complexities we want to go two out of two with the blitz perk that melee distance is increased even more but what really matters the further the blitz did distance, the greater the damage. I'll talk much more deeply on the Blitz perk later on in the video. Now, if you want to do sneaking, the best way to do this is probably with a stealth boy, to be honest, and a big set of power armor. But if you do want to sneak at all, you should know something. The ninja perk. When you go three out of three, what we can see there, your ranged sneak attacks now do 3.5 times normal damage, and melee sneak attacks do 10 times normal damage. As you probably noticed, it doesn't mention unarmed. Sadly, for unarmed, it is only a 3.5 times multiplier and not 10 times like melee attacks. So you can go 3 out of 3 with that if you like. And finally we'll want to go with better criticals 3 out of 3. Your criticals now do 2.5 times as much extra damage. So after that I still had a strength of 10 and I had no bobblehead or magazine effects applied. However I did now have all of those perks applied and as we can see the unarmed damage output is at 349 ballistic damage. Now initially I just planned on making a normal weapon slash armor guide for Tessa's fist. Little did I know this was so complex, which isn't an issue, just means it took a little bit longer to make and also that this video is probably going to be a lot longer than normal. Gotta hit that 10 minute mark, am I right pewds? But I just thought I should clarify the reason I'm running through all of this technical stuff is because this video is going to be a one-off in terms of I'm covering a power armor piece as a weapon, unless they bring out something mental in Nuka World. But because it's a one-off, I thought we should go all out and actually run through through everything like perks and how the mathematics of figuring out how much damage your unarmed attacks are doing works. Now trust me, I know I had to sit here doing calculations for an hour. These next couple of minutes get super, super maths heavy. Not Einstein heavy, but this is a Fallout 4 build. We're not normally talking about maths. So bear with it, even if you hate a bit of maths, the end result is most certainly worth it. So while we're still fresh on the topic of damage, don't forget we now have an unarmed damage output of 300 and 49, which is pretty good, but it does get much, much better. First off, let's talk about the Blitz perk. So inside of that, Blitz basically allows you to teleport to your enemies provided they are within the Blitz distance. One point in the Blitz perk doubles the distance you can travel, and two points triples the distance you can travel. Now the further you are away from the enemy, the more damage you'll do to them. The maximum bonus damage increase you can get from this is 25%. So if you go inside of that and you're standing at maximum range from an enemy, Enemy, do an unarmed attack with Tessa's fist, you're going to get an extra 25% damage. So with 349 unarmed damage output, with a blitz attack at max range, you're going to be doing 436 damage per punch. So now let's talk about critical hits. With unarmed and melee combat doing 
using crits is actually a little bit different than using a ranged weapon. It does more damage, and that's what I like to hear. So with maximum better critical perks, we get 2.5 times as the crit multiplier. But what is it multiplying? Well, this is the answer. We need to multiply the unarmed damage output by 1.5. So 349 times 1.5 is 523 and a half. Then we add on the base damage, which was 50. So 523.5 plus 50 gives us 573.5. And that's the number that's then going to be multiplied by 2.5, which is of course the critical multiplier, which ends up leaving us with 1,433 damage. Now that's with a critical punch, not taking into account sneaking, nor taking into account blitz bonuses. Now for theory's sake, let's say we're at maximum blitz distance. This is going to increase the damage by 25%. Now the blitz perk actually increases the damage before the critical multiplier is applied. So it will increase the 573 damage by 25%, leaving us with 716. And then that number has the critical multiplier applied, which is 2.5, leaving us with 1,792. So if you're at max blitz range and do a critical hit, you're gonna punch someone for 1,792 damage. 1,792. And if your character's luck's pretty high, you're going to be doing this like every three or four punches. That is most certainly not something to turn your nose down at. And before this starts turning into a lecture about quantum physics delivered by Stephen Hawkins, let's just do one more calculation. Provided we have three out of three with a ninja perk, a sneak attack is going to do 3.5 times normal damage. Now normal damage being 349 times that by 3.5, and we end up with a sneak damage of 1,221. Pretty decent. Now let's Let's say you're at maximum blitz range and you get the extra 25%. Well, that 25% is going to be added to the initial 349. So the max range blitz damage will be 436. Times that by the sneak multiplier being 3.5. And we end up with a blitz sneak attack of 1,526. Now, because critical damage and sneak damage are two separate critical calculations, we can actually add them together to get the ultimate damage of a sneaking critical maximum ranged blitz attack. So max blitz critical hit was 1,792 and the max blitz sneak attack was 1,526. Put those two together and to get a sneaking critical max blitz attack we end up with 3,319 damage. Okay, that is an actual number you can actually punch people for. And you know what? You can actually get it even higher. All you need to do is simply increase your strength. A couple of points in strength increases the base unarmed damage output a little bit, but a couple of points at the start can add hundreds of extra damage at the end. Also on top of that, there are bobbleheads and magazines which will add even more damage. So hopefully I have clarified that not only unarmed builds, but using Tess's fist is actually pretty nuts. Now you could get this exact same damage from using any power armor arm pieces. But as we know, Tessa's Fist has that hugely high durability. Now you might be thinking that Tessa's Fist is only a piece of Raider power armor, which isn't that good compared to other sets of power armor. But the reason we know Tessa's Fist is built for unarmed combat is its huge durability. And provided you give it the durability upgrade, taking its base durability to 100, then you get the extra 150 from the legendary effect, you end up with 250 durability, which is still even more durable with an even higher item health than X01 Mark VI. That sets arm pieces have a durability of 215. So Tessa's Fist is actually 35 item health points or durability points better than an X01 Mark VI arm piece. Better in terms of durability anyway. Therefore better at punching people because it's going to last longer. And just as a fun little fact, along with all things to do with fisting, Tessa's Fist is the only piece of unique Raider power armor in the game. So you now know the full potential of Tessa's Fist. I am glad I was able to lend you a hand. Just be careful when using it that you don't become a knucklehead. Ironically, Tessa's Fist is colored brown, but if fisting's too intense for you, Tessa's Fist does come equipped with four perfectly good fingers. So bend over, baby. Here it comes, as you're about to feel.
Tessa's fist in action. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my guide for the unique piece of power armor known as Tessa's Fist, specifically built to be used during unarmed combat. So ironically, it's a bit more of a weapon. If it did help you out, which I do hope it did, I think you will be very interested on clicking on the playlist button on screen. This of course will take you directly to my Fallout 4 guides playlist where you can select videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. If you are a fan of getting elbow deep, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. The link can also be found in the description. And with all that said, as always, I would like to thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here with me. And I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.